Pathos by Julian Simpson. to episode 123 of the Hicks Street Podcast with me, Jonathan Hicks. Right now, I'm in the back of a posh car headed towards a large country house in an undisclosed location. Regular listeners will be familiar with the Hicks Street Podcast continuing an investigation into the shadowy events at Pleasant Green and the supposed clandestine number station there. Well, it seems you're not the only ones. Earlier this week, I got a phone call from someone representing the British government. Turns out they've been tuning in as well, and they've asked me to come out to this location to meet with their representative and get the real lowdown on what happened to the population of an entire village that suddenly vanished into thin air. So, here we go. Will it be the truth or more government spin and obfuscation? Let's find out. It's a big house. It's very impressive. There's a man in uniform. There's a butler or something waiting at the door for me. Morning! Okay, inside. It's more like a work building. There are a lot of people moving around and they all look pretty purposeful. Oi, excuse me. Uh, Yet yeah, you, is that a recording device? Oh, well, it's, it's one of... Oh, Clive, you let this guy in with a voice recorder. Ah, uh, Jonathan Hicks. I don't care. Turn it off. Uh, Mr. Johnson said Mr. Hicks was to be unmolested. Yeah, that's right. I have an appointment with you. Unmolest who I want. Give it here. Wait, wait, wait. That, that was professional equipment. Okay, fine. I was supposed to be meeting Mary Lair. Yeah, uh, delighted. Oh, you're Looks there. like we both make a rubbish first impression. You're lucky to be here. Well, well, I'm pleased that someone was listening to the podcast and taking it seriously. No, I mean they wanted to kill you. Hit and run. That's how seriously your podcast was taken. I intervened. What? You're welcome. I, what? Are you serious? Yeah. But then why am I... Sorry, I don't understand. You work for us now. No point recording anything because you don't have a podcast. A message has gone up on your site due to ill health and blah, blah, blah. The Hickstry podcast... Okay. History, I seriously, has been discontinued. Gratitude to all the loyal listeners. Hope they won't be too disappointed, etc., etc. Good night and good luck. This is outrageous. Yeah, but it beats being smashed to pieces by an 18-wheeler. We're late for a meeting. Wait, wait. Meeting with who? Johnson. What about? We need a movement order. Was Johnson one of the ones who wanted to have me killed? Uh, He's an acquired taste. I can't believe any of this. It's a good place to start. You know Mary Lair is the name of Ghost? Really? Well, technically Marie. Wally Retchery, the most haunted house in England. Uh-huh. She was a French nun in the 17th century. Someone murdered her and broke her up in a basement of the house. Uh-huh. So she was haunted in the site until the house was demolished in 1944. Stop talking now. Yeah. Oh, Mary. I found the new kid. Well, well. Mr. Hicks. Look. Am I? <laughs> of course. You were going to kill me. I was going to have you killed. I tend not to go in for the wet work myself these days. I was onto something. We don't kill people who aren't. Pleasant Green, I was close to the truth. That incident has classified Cobalt India. It is so far above your current clearance level that I can have you locked up just for saying the words green and pleasant in the wrong order. <laughs> You're joking. Why would I do that? Can we get on with this? I've got transport waiting. Transport to where? Hadley in Essex. I need a movement order. Has there been a memo? Yeah. I'll have one of my lot bash something out, but we need to go now. Hardly. Which country? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm looking at an accelerating fracture event. Go on. <sighs> Little village, small population, incidents of heart failure have spiked at seven times the national average, blighted crops, issues with water contamination, and as of last night, a big black dog. Black shock. That's why I've got a car standing by. Black Shook, but that's that's just a miss. Mr. Hicks, on the first floor, you will find a door marked quartermaster. Go there and tell Miss Stone you require a department phone on my authority. I tell her you will need all the John D. Grimoire and a full set of Enochian wards loaded onto it. Uh, I... Yes, right away. You think someone's found the book? That's what I'm worried about. 
Once you're on the site, I want hourly updates. Are you sure you want to take Hicks? It might require a human sacrifice. about haunted houses, but you don't believe hundreds of sightings of a giant black dog across his The hauntings of Borley Rectory were documented by multiple witnesses. I'm not saying they were really ghosts, but, you know, there was something. A big black dog. It was probably just a big black dog. That appeared from thin air and then vanished back into it. These sightings were all at a time where people believed in... <sighs> There's stuff we know now. Blighted crops, which were attributed to witchcraft. They could have been any number of diseases. And witches killing people with curses. Ridiculous. Yes, ridiculous. And yet it's happening in Hadley in 2016. No, it isn't. You were wrong about Pleasant Green, by the way. I mean, you were right that we were lying about it. You were just a million miles from the truth of what actually happened. Which was... Something a lot weirder than a ghostly hound and some poorly crops. Why am I here, then? I'm such an idiot. Sometimes it's useful to have an idiot around. It stops all the smart people thinking the same thing. Recent is not where our problem lies. We're looking for something that went missing around about 1860. And this map shows the village then, so it'll give us a better idea of where we should be looking. And what is this missing thing? It's a book of spells. Seriously? How is the owner-operator of a podcast dedicated to tinfoil hat conspiracy theories so incredulous? This book is well over a thousand years old. The last person who owned it was a fellow called James Murrell. He died in this village in 1860, and no one's seen the book since. It now looks like it might have turned up. So, some dead crops and someone's black dog on the loose has got us looking for an ancient book of magic. And this department is funded by taxpayers' money. The problem with you conspiracy nuts is you have no idea how weird the world really is. Look like I think. Come on. Ah, that tickles. Oh, Seth, no. 
no. <laughs> I, Kate Horton, take thee, Seth Anthony Taylor, to be my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, till death us do. at the river. What is my shirt? Therefore can I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. I understand, love. But you can't go on working until you drop dead. We've got some savings. Time to pack it in now, eh? And take it easy. Hicks. Why else would these gentlemen be dressed like this in 1942? Three. I mistake. Three. Time flies, doesn't it? Uh, hey, Germans, you reckon, Sarge? Yes, I'm very much mistaken, Corporal. You uh, are very much mistaken. What is going on? Not now, Mr. Hicks. Do excuse him. Shell shock. <gasps> My papers. Mr. Hicks is with me. Oh, Minister. Indeed, Sergeant, but not officially, and my superiors would appreciate your discretion. Of course, say no more, Miss Dare. I trust you understand we have to be cautious. Not only do I understand, Sergeant, I applaud it, and I'll be sure and mention your thoroughness in my report. Oh, but that would be marvellous. Marvellous. Is there any way the Home Guard could be of assistance to you today? There is. We're looking for the inhabitants of this house. Well, if I were to guess, I might point you in the direction of the pub back up the lake. Ah, of course, lunchtime. Thank you very much for your time, Sergeant. Dawson, ma'am. Aubrey Dawson. I shall mention you in dispatches, Sergeant Dawson. Corporal? Ah, oh, oh. mm. good day to you, madam. And uh, Mr. Hicks. What the hell? Fracture event. Worse than I thought. Yeah, what does that mean? Those two think it's 1943 if they escaped from somewhere. They're not real. Excuse me? They may have been real once. Were they ghosts? Uh, kind of. Memories brought back to life. Like the house. What about the house? The Murrell house was demolished in the 1960s. This house? Yes. But it's right here? Yes. Weird, isn't it? Should we have a look inside? Well, no. You got that phone the quartermaster gave you? Yeah. There's I... an app labelled Enoch. Click it. What does it do? It casts a protective ward around you. It's Elizabethan magic. Strong stuff. It's a phone app. We are very welcome to go looking for virgin's blood to smear on your body if you prefer. This is like a bad dream. Whose dream, though? That's the question. This is a fracture event. Something has cracked a hole in reality and stuff is pouring through from the past. Except it's not really the past. It's an idea of the past. Well, that clears that up. Good. Can we go inside? Interesting. Is it? 
we're standing in a house that hasn't existed for 50 years. Pretty much anything about it is interesting. You don't need to whisper. Whatever's up there, I don't think we're sneaking up on it. Should we not? Um, I mean, you know, we found this place and we've established that there's a fracture or whatever. Should we not just pull back and let the experts take care of it? We are the experts. Do you hear voices? This is my associate, Mr. Hicks. Hello, this is my house. What do they want? And you are? What, what do you want? We're from the ministry, Mr. What, what ministry? Yes, classified, I'm afraid. My name's Taylor, Seth Taylor. Look him up on your phone. Oh, yeah. How long have you lived here, Mr. Taylor? All my life, and you're trespassing. Is anyone else in the house? My wife is here. Who is it, Seth? They're from the ministry, she says. Seth Taylor, age seven years old. This is my wife, Kat. Supposed to be living at a residential home a few miles away. Hello, Mrs. Taylor. Oh, well, that's weird. Weird is good. Give me weird. Kate Taylor died 20 years ago. Uh, yeah, I thought he was batting above his average. What's he saying? You look very well, Mrs. Taylor. He also lost a child, a boy, Ronald, age seven. He drowned in 1957. Is your son about, Mr. Taylor? Yeah, I can't ask boy. Yeah, the garden. Why? What's this to do with him? It's your dog. Well, we're looking after him. The dog is here. The dog? The dog. Whose dog is it, Mr. Taylor? You haven't told me what you're doing well, We're investigating an occurrence. <laughs> a what now? The man who owns the dog. Do you know his name? Well, he's a foreign gentleman. A nice fellow. Are, he, are you from immigration? What's his name? Well, I don't know if I should. You should, believe me. <laughs> his name's Nibbert. Oh, that, that means something to you. Has Mr. Nibbert done something wrong? Oh, he's probably an illegal, isn't he? Did he give you anything, Mr. Taylor, apart from the dog? The dog's harmless. Look, I'll Leave the dog. Keep that door closed. Did the Boad give you something, Mr. Taylor? Just a book. He's a funny old boy. Where's the book now? He took it with him. I just had the loan to it for a day or so. Mr. Taylor, could I have a word in private? What? Um, yeah, go, go back in, love. Really. Keep the dog company. Did your wife know? I can't let them go again. Mr. Taylor. I won't. Do your wife and son know their ghosts? They're not ghosted. They're real. Real as you and me. Please, please, now don't make them go away again. Seth? Seth? Seth, love, did the dog come past you? Uh, no. It's just, I was looking out the window, checking on little Ronnie, and, and when I turned around, the dog was gone. Oh, good, the dog vanished. Where do we find the boad, Mr. Taylor? I don't know. Something but... about the yew tree. Well, as in an actual yew tree. Oh, that makes sense. Yew trees have mystical properties. It's the name of the pub. He said he'd be in the pub. wife and child. Yep. So, that spell is the epicenter and the rest of the village is subject to temporal fractures resulting from it. Yes, the, the spell is the start of it, but not the point of it. <sighs> Go on. Seth Taylor claims the spell book was given to him by Naboad. We don't have a confirmed place and time for his death. If he's still around, he could have caused the fracture deliberately to give himself access to the Middle Ages. Well, you know what that's going to be? I do. Why well, don't? Who's that? Uh, it's, it's Hicks. You're on speaker. Well, don't put me on speaker with the I'm here. I don't like the sound of this at all. I'm putting special measures on standby, but I'd rather not pull the trigger until you've got your hands on that book. We're working on it. The fracture's new, which means Naboad can't have fully exploited it yet. I want that bitch. You'll get them. It's definitely time for that conversation. Can we walk and talk? Where are we going? To the pub. To find this Naboad guy? Yeah. It's okay, well, let's start with him. All right, Naboad uh, was a wizard in the sense of being a male witch. And yeah. we know pretty much nothing about him except he was in this area in the early 19th century where he met a man named James Murrell. And Murrell had been born in a place called Canyadon, which is a creepy little village up the road from here. And he was the seventh son of a seventh son, which is significant if you're into that stuff, and moved to Hadley in 1812 and set up as a shoemaker. And around this time, he met Naboad. And Naboad taught him magic and gave him his spell book. Murrell used the book and Naboad's teaching to become a cunning man, kind of a, a healer slash shaman figure. Very famous around here at the time. And a lot of strange and, and wonderful acts were attributed to him. He's known as the last cunning man of England. 
the idea of folk magic having pretty much died out by the mid-19th century. Murrell himself died on the 16th of December 1860, the date he'd allegedly predicted as the day of his demise. He left behind all his gubbins in a chest, including the spell book. But then it disappeared, and it's not been seen since. All right. Okay, so there's many, many things to take issue with there, but chief among them, you reckon Nabarad is back in town? Yes. And he's how old? Well, we think he was about 300 when Murrell met him. In 1812? Yeah. We think he was about 300? We've just been talking to a woman who died 20 years ago in a phantom house where she was looking after a notorious hellhound, and this guy's age is a sticking point. Well, I can't help what my brain can't accept. But okay, okay. Nabarad had the book. Why did he give it to Seth Taylor? Mm, that's the question. Unless... What's the dead wife's maiden name? Um... Horton. Catherine Horton. Child of? Mr. and Mrs. Horton. Hmm. Ah, but Mrs. Horton's maiden name... Was Marrell. Yeah. There it is. The book has to be activated by or on behalf of its last owner. Insurance against someone nicking it. In the event the last owner is brown bread, you slide down the family tree. So, Naboad hands the book to an octogenarian who's mourning the past and offers him a chance to bring his wife and kid back. Wow. That's not them, though, obviously. Obviously? No, they're Seth's memory rendered flesh. That's why we never see the kid. What? Seth's 87. Little Ronnie drowned 60 years ago. I don't reckon Seth's memory of him is vivid enough to conjure much more than an impression of a, a nine-year-old kid playing outside. So that's what ghosts are? They're physicalised memories from living? No. OK, so what's Nabora's game plan? Standard dark wizard stuff, probably. Return to former glory, blah, blah, blah. Seth bringing back his wife and kid has caused a fracture in reality. That's why we've got Dad's army wandering about and Black Shook. So the past is coming through the fracture? No, no, it's a fictional past. That's an important distinction. This isn't real history. It's the village's folk memory. But there'll be the nice stuff, like uh, people leaving their back doors unlocked, kids playing out in a perpetual summertime, and the cricket. The cricket? What about the cricket? We've been hearing this match the whole time. Where is it happening? Where's the pitch? Well, the... It's... There isn't... There isn't one. English village, middle of summer, sounds of cricket on the village green. We're hearing collective nostalgia, mate. It isn't real. It's the soundtrack to the Brexit vote. And if this is the good stuff, that means they're bad too. Well, that's what the Boad is after. This area was known for witchcraft. In the folk memory, there's a swirling fog and a big black dog and mysterious deaths caused by powerful witches and wizards. That's very much the scene Naboad is looking forward to swimming in again. Right, how do we stop it? Walk into this pub, find Naboad, and sort of generally take it from there. Well, the Jubilee celebration wasn't in my diary. What? What just happened? Where'd you go? Well, I'm right. I can't... I can't see you. Uh, OK. I can't see you either. But it sounds like you're right here. Are you in a wood? I'm a what? I'm in a wood. It's... it's night. All right. That's quite cool. Is it? What can you see? Uh, well, it's dark. Um, there's a clearing up ahead. There's a stream on my left. Uh, I can see lights. I think there's a fire. Oh, there's people. There's people moving around a tree. It sounds like they're chanting. What kind of tree? I don't know. It's a tree. Is it big and old and a bit twisty? Yes. It's a yew tree. There's one out the back of this pub, hence the name. So we're in the same place at different times. Are you able to move about ten feet forward and slightly to the left? Uh, yeah. Why? That's where the bar is. You want to get a drink without losing contact. A drink. It's the Queen's Silver Jubilee in it. It's murder up at the bar. 1977. I probably won't try the food. Look, how do we get out of this? Lager and lime in a packet ready sorted, please. Oh, they have those crisps with a little blue bag of salt in them. How do I get to where you are? I <laughs> know, right? It's the best crisps ever. I can hear the dog. Can you see it? No. All right, can you get closer to that clearing? I need you to tell me what's happening. What are you moving to? No, I've just got my drink. Mark your place and come back here to tell me what you saw. Probably be a bit careful. My children. We 
gather here this night to invoke the ancient deities in the pages of this book. Who's there? They saw me. There's a man there and a dog. What was the man like? What? I don't know. He was in charge. He had a book. Bingo. They're chasing me. Will you get the book? Are you not? Ah! No, no, no. Get me out of here. Well, I'm working on it. Activate the wards on your phone. Ah. Oh, no. Oh, no. What? Oh, no. I've dropped my phone somewhere. Oh, that's not good. Oh, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. What should I do? What should I do? You run. Okay. I'm running where? where? Run away. Uh, Honestly, I can't do all the thinking. Uh, oh. <sighs> yeah, they yeah, I think me too. for me mean nothing. <laughs> it's going to be one of those conversations. I'm glad I got a drink. Where is my drink? In 1977. Ah, and where are we? We are outside of time. And I'm definitely not risking the sausage rolls. And my associate? He is in the year of our Lord, 1603, interfering with the ritual. That's a bummer. I'm going to take a wild guess and say 1603 is where you've hidden the book. <laughs> I do not need to hide it. The book belongs to me. That's a fair point. But I'm still going to need it. And I'm going to need you to call your Mary Coven and your puppy off my colleague. Who are you to give me orders? My name's Mary Lair. I work for the government and I am, if I say so myself, quite the handful. <laughs> <laughs> Was that scoffing? I always wondered what that actually sounded like. Well, now I'll tell you what, Merlin, scoff away. Because you just whisked a man with a mobile phone back to 1603. If you think the people back there are impressed with your magical powers, wait till they get a load of his Pokemon Go. He's up there, I see him. Wait. What's... What's this? Wait. What's... He's... He's left this box behind. It's... It's made of... He's possessed. I'm not sure I understand. <gasps> uh, there's a house. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, there's lights up ahead. There's a house. Oh, hello again, Mr. Hicks. It's one thing opening a fracture in reality and dragging a fictionalised version of the past through. It's quite another sending the real present back into the past. See, what that does is it changes the story in the past, which alters the folk memory and messes around with the present. You're not even pretending to follow this, are you? I have better things to do than listen to your lies. What is it with stupid people that anything you don't understand must be a lie? All right, you can move us through this fracture, yeah? So, take us back to 1977. For what purpose? Well, I've paid for a drink back there that I haven't touched. And I want to show you something. Ah, there it is. Right, that's better. Notice anything different? All right, not quick enough, I'll tell you. It's no longer the Jubilee. Hmm, why is that, I wonder? Don't underestimate the power of fiction, mate. That's the stuff that really shapes thought. These people here aren't combing through broadsheet newspapers every day and then glued to the nightly news. They get their opinions from the stories they tell each other. And those stories form the very folk memory you're trying to monkey around with to make witchcraft think again. So, what do you think happens to that folk memory if it suddenly includes a story of someone discovering a smartphone in 1603? 
Excuse me. Um, what's the Wi-Fi password in here? It's U-Tree, all lowercase, 1977. Ta. Village pump has a Wi-Fi password in 1977. Should we whip back to the present now, see how that's doing? Oh, well, that's different. How did you do that? I've got some tricks up my sleeve, don't you worry. What do you think happened to this pub? Fire, maybe? Looks more like an explosion, doesn't it? In fact, looking around, this whole area looks like a war zone. An invasion, maybe, or a nuclear war. You start messing around with the stories, you see. You corrupt the folk memory. Who knows what happens? Hello? Hello? Yeah. Where did you go? Ah, the yew tree is still here, though. Interesting. Who is it, love? Is that Mr. Hicks back again? Oh, oh yeah. Where's Miss Lair? Uh, well, uh, she's at the dog outside. No, 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 no. The dog's trying to kill me. Oh, no, he's a soft dog. Well, thing. listen, just leave him outside in the fresh air. Well, he's probably hungry. That's what I'm afraid of. Lair for Johnson. Captain Johnson was killed. Captain? So, sorry, where am I calling? This is the Ministry of War. Okay, thank you. Never mind. Oh, Hicks, your phone has a lot to answer for. Ooh, speaking of which, let's see if find my phone works across five centuries. Oh, well, that's, that battery lasted. Hicks? Oh, it's in the tree. Of course, perfect hiding place for magical items. Thousand years old, ritual significance, near a pub. I don't understand how you're here in this house. Well, we haven't left since you were last here. This is a different time. What's he talking now, about? Why don't you go and put the kettle on, love? She doesn't know. You can't talk about this stuff in front of her. <gasps> what the hell is going on? Do you even know when this is? Well, I'm no expert, but if I got Mr. Nibowad right, this house exists outside of time and in all time simultaneously. And what does that mean? You're asking the wrong farm labour there, son. Who's that now? What? I didn't hear anything. It was the door. You didn't hear anything. Oh, no. Well, don't open it. The door. Hello again, Mr. Taylor. Oh, hello, love. Come in. Your Miss Lair is here. Where? Who are you talking to, Mr. Taylor? Uh, your Mr. Hicks. He's right here. But I... Oh, I don't think we can see or hear each other. But... Well, how's that then? I can't see anyone. We're in different times. I'm in the present, 2017. Mr. Hicks is in 1603. Oh, blimey. Yes. What? She says you're in different times. It's why you can't see or hear each other. Oh, well, what's she going to do about it? He wants to know. What I'm going to do about it? Would you ask Mr. Hicks to shut up and let me think? She says to be quiet a bit. Well, that's easy for her to say. Where's Kate? Well, she's got the kettle on. I had to send her out. Mr. Hicks here was about to spill the beans. Sorry about that. Yeah, he's new to all this. I wonder if you could do me a favour, Mr. Taylor. This is Mr. Hicks's mobile phone. If I pass it to you, can we see if you can pass it to him? Well, I don't see why not. Here, your phone. Where'd you get that from? Did it work? Yep, no problem. Well, you're basically a time machine. Congratulations, Mr. Taylor. Let's see if that had the desired effect. Apocalypse averted. Would you give me a moment? What's happening? Uh, she's averted the apocalypse.
Apocalypse, apparently. Uh, now she's founding someone. The tea is left. Put me through to Johnson. Oh, I didn't know we had another guest. Hello, Mrs. Taylor. Is that tea? Shall I get another cup? Lovely. Hello, it's me. Progress? Yes, sort of. Uh, I've got the book. It was hidden in a yew tree. Excellent. The fracture is still open. Well, close it. What are you waiting for? Well, it's, it's all got a little bit complicated. Hicks and I are in different time periods at the moment. He's in 1603. How did he get there? Honest. And his mobile phone may have been passed around a bit. Oh, fuck. No, it's all right. Changed the future, but I've sent it back. If there's an anomaly, it shouldn't be a big one. And I saved your life, incidentally. How's that? Well, turn at 2017 is in the midst of some kind of war. You were a captain. You'd just been killed in action. A captain? Well, I must have been demoted for some reason. You know what the clowns who run these things can be like. What are you going to do, Lair? Well, am I right in thinking that getting hold of the book is only half a win? And if we could trap Naboa somewhere... Marvellous, yes. Let's see the back of him for a while. In which case, I might need to initiate special circumstances. You sure that's necessary? I'd like to bring Hicks back, if I can. He's perfectly expendable. Well, yes, he is. But if I leave him back there with his phone... Captain Johnson... <laughs> Fine. You have authorization. We'll have Mr. Hicks sign the requisite confidentiality agreements upon his return. And I need a favour. There's a man called Seth Taylor. He's 87 years old and he lives at the old folks' home outside the village. I need a death certificate. Someone's banging on the door. Uh, hold on. Uh, where or when your friend is. Uh, okay. Gotta go. We're going into the kitchen, Mr. Taylor. Quickly, tell Hicks to stall. She says to stall. Well, where are you going? Could you give us a moment, Mrs. Taylor? No, I can't. I'm done being shuffled from pillar to post. Anything you can say to Seth, you can say to me. And that's that. Fair enough. You're dead, Mrs. Taylor. You've been dead for 20 years. Oh, no! That means I wasn't born yesterday, then, doesn't it? We know when we're dead, dear. You of all people. You knew? Seth Taylor. There's nothing on this earth that you know and I don't. Well, this makes it easier. I need to amend the spell that brought you and Ronnie back. No, 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 you it's can't. all right, I'm not reversing it. That's what the death certificate is for. You can stay together. We just need to move this house out of time and out of memory, and then you can stay here forever. How are you going to do that? I'm not. You are. I need you to take this book and amend this spell to this. Okay? <sighs> Just say the words. Yep, simple as that. And as soon as you've said it, Seth, you drop the book on the ground, okay? That's important. You do not keep hold of the book. And I do this now. No, give me about a minute to grab my colleague. But you can't yes, see. She you. can. She's not like us, Seth. She's not like either of us. I like you, Mrs. Taylor. You two and the kid enjoy eternity, all right? Thank you. and I jump right down it because it turns out that I'm a better known story than you are. You're the ghost. Can we do this later? Have you got your phone? Oh, it's here. Keep yeah. hold of it. We don't want to leave that behind again. You are going nowhere. Oh, it's going to kill us. Well, it can't kill me. Don't look in its eyes. Where's the book? Oh, yeah. Found your hiding place. Where is my book? It's in the kitchen with Seth. I made a couple of alterations. Right now, Seth is doing a spell to move this house out of time and seal the fracture behind it. What? Take my hand. I will kill you all. No, you'll stay here in 1603 where you'll be a minor local cult leader for a few years until some witch finder rides into town and chucks you in the pond to see if you float. There'll be no book, so there'll be no meeting with James Murrell and no last cunning man. But if there's no cunning Murrell, then the book can't get to Seth, which means he can't resurrect Kate. There'll be then... a parallel time stream. Don't give yourself a migraine. Ready when you are, Mr. Taylor! Sick. You hear that? What? The cricket. What cricket? Exactly. 
Exactly. Fractured clothes. Seth and Kate together with their kids forever. And a book right over there. Jobs are good at. Pub? This was the moral house. Was, yeah. It's not here. No, try and come up to speed. But you're a ghost. Well, kind of. I was. Well, at first I wasn't. Then I died. Then I was for a bit. And now I'm pretty much not again, except when Johnson clears me to drop the wards and be a ghost again. Should we go to the pub? I do not understand. Perhaps you need a nice drink. But it's not. Walk and talk. Mrs. Lair? Turn away from the pub, Mary. You two are heading for Scotland. Ah. Oh. Do try not to groan when I give you an assignment. Glam's Castle, you know? I know of it. I imagine you might have friends there. Oh, because all us ghosts know each other. Quite. There's a secret room oh, which good. stopped being secret at 11.30 this morning when two American tourists stumbled onto it. And what did they find? No idea. We can't find them. Oh, well, how big is this room? The most accurate measurement based on eyewitness reports is that it seems to stretch for approximately 50 miles and encompasses extensive forests and a mountain range. <sighs> you know I hate these ones. Well, then you'll be relieved to learn that you and Hicks won't be going this alone. This action has been classified Cerulean Harvest. Oversight. Exactly. So get your skates on and I'll see you in Angus. Just as soon as Marjorie has managed to dig out my kilt. In Mythos by Julian Simpson. Lair was played by Nicola Walker, Johnson by Tim McInerney, Hicks by Jonathan Bailey, Aubrey and other parts by Hugh Ross, Naboad by Stephen McIntosh, Seth by David Calder, Kate and other parts by Emma Fielding. Original music was by David Thomas, the director was Julian Simpson, and the producer, Karen Rose. Mythos was a sweet talk production for BBC Radio.